Just as with a modern oven, our brick oven needs preheating, but this isn't as simple as pushing a button to set the thermostat or to set the oven temperature. In the case of the brick oven, a fire is built directly inside the bake oven, first towards the front, and then later it's pushed deeper inside, and it's allowed to burn for approximately two hours. And what you're doing is you're heating the bricks. Brick oven baking is baking using the retained heat because the bricks will continue to release heat over a matter of many hours. It's another reason why if you're using the brick bake oven, you're planning a quantity of baking because you want to make sure that you're making good use of your fuel and all the heat that's inside the bake oven. Um, let's see. When the oven has reached the desired temperature, all the embers and the coals are swept out. And the oven is closed for a few minutes to allow the heat to build up, and that's called soaking the oven. Okay, it doesn't have anything to do with water, it's to allow the heat to soak in evenly into the bricks. So, how could a housewife tell if the oven was hot enough? There are a couple of different methods that they would use that are referred to in the uh, housekeeping manuals. Um, first of all, there is something called brightening. When the oven has brightened, which means that basically the soot has all burned off and the coals inside are white. Uh, did I say coals? And then to say the walls of the bake oven are white. And an example of that is over here in the fireplace. Earlier today we had the fire burning in the corner of the fireplace. And you can see that the shape of that fire is sort of outlined by black soot. But where the fire was hottest and most intense, it's completely white. All right, Any soot has burned off. And I don't know if you can see or not, but inside the bake oven, the brick walls are starting to, to brighten. So we're getting close with our bake oven. All right, so that's one way. Uh, if the oven has brightened, it's probably getting hot enough. Um, other methods involve things as simple as throwing in a handful of flour onto the floor of the bake oven. And uh, depending on what happens with the flour, does it instantly burn, then your oven's too hot. If it uh, slowly, slowly browns, it's not hot enough. But if it browns within a set period of time, and again, the housekeeper knows what this is, then it's the right temperature. You're ready to go. There's another term that's used here is when your oven is sparkling. And that also refers to throwing in the flour and seeing how quickly it burns off. Then the other method is to actually stick your arm in the oven and see how long you can hold it in there. Uh, if you can count up to 20, um, it's probably hot enough. If you can count past that, it's uh, not hot enough. And if you have to yank your arm out after counting 10, it's too hot. You need to let it cool down. Uh, so they, these are these very interesting ways uh, of determining whether your oven is ready or not. And again, a lot of it depends on the expertise of the housewife. You know, she develops an experience base when she can tell, yes, it's hot enough. Okay. Uh, when the oven is at its hottest, uh, food which today would be baked at a high temperature, something between 400 and 500 degrees, such as cookies, biscuits, bread, that's what goes in first. And you're also going to put in the things that would take the longest to bake towards the back of the oven because you, don't, you want to minimize how often you're opening and closing the bake oven door and how often you have to move things around. When the oven has cooled somewhat to medium, today it would be maybe around 350 degrees, then you can put in things such as um, cakes, things of that sort that take a medium oven. Over the course of the day, the oven will continue to release heat. Uh, when it starts to cool down, but it's still pretty warm, and this is what's called a slack oven. A slack oven is used for foods that might bake at a low temperature for many hours. Uh, maybe something like uh, an Indian pudding or uh, a crock of beans or something like that. Uh, think in terms of what you might put today in a crock pot. That would be a slack oven for many hours, maybe even overnight. Yep. If you've been to a brick oven pizzeria, and obviously they're book baking a brick oven, but they keep the fire going all the time. And that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, they're baking all day or all night long. And also because 
pizzas bake at a pretty high temperature. So they need to keep the temperature up. Um, we're not doing that. We're going to bake our bread. And then if we were good colonial housewives, we'd be baking maybe some cake or something else that the family might want. We're trying to get out as much of the embers and coals as we can. Something to sweep out the, 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 the dust, uh, the, the final ashes. Uh, and it could be, I've read accounts of using a dried turkey wing, uh, a hemlock bough, um, maybe even uh, a bundle of rags on a stick just to, to sort of swipe it out. We have a little broom that we're going to give it a shot and hope we don't set the broom on fire. 